Well, if Lamar Jackson is the quarterback everyone's talking about with an AFC team, there's a quarterback with an NFC team that will continue to be a significant point of discussion, especially as we get to the week where all the teams descend on Indianapolis. And if there are deals to be made, now is the time to make it. You've got Derek Carr floating around. You've got other quarterback options in free agency. The log jam begins and ends with Aaron Rodgers. What is he going to do? Question one, is he retiring or playing? Question two, is he playing for the Packers or someone else? Question three, if not the Packers, then who? Chris, he did his darkness retreat. While you were baking in the sun last week and turning red like a boiled lobster, (laughs) Aaron Rodgers was devoid of all light in a 300-square-foot semi-underground bungalow where, if that, is it a bungalow or a bunker? Maybe bunker is the better B-U-N word. But either way, that's where he was in this search for whatever enlightenment he needs to decide what he wants to do, and now we wait. But as I said, the day that word broke that his darkness retreat had ended, it's time for him to let the Packers know what he's going to do. Because even though we know what the Packers' alternative plan is, Jordan Love becomes the starter, if you're going to trade Aaron Rodgers, you need to work it out now. These teams out there that are interested in Rodgers need to know whether or not they're going to get him. This is the week to do it. Yeah, it is the week to do it. Uh, and the, 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 the clock is ticking here. Certainly. I mean, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to screw over Green Bay and and maybe some of these other teams or himself that might be interested in him, I would think he's got to make, you know, make it be known here at some point over the next two weeks, maybe sooner than that. Right. Uh, You know, I I think at the end of the day, too, Mike, when I look at it, the Rodgers situation, I have no idea where this goes, where it's going to go. I still think that if you made me bet, he'd be back in Green Bay. The other thing I come to, or at least in my opinion, or at least I come to a lot of the times is like, you know, if it's not the Jets, who's it going to be? Do you really think there's anybody else there that is a really a, like a realistic option other than the Jets, right? So to me, it's one of those two teams. And yeah, does Rodgers want to come deal with New York or does he still want to be the king of the castle in Green Bay? And that's where I think ultimately he'll end up still staying there. Complicating the situation is – the fact that the day that that we shut down for a week and a half, right. Tyler Dunn at GoLongTD.com had a podcast with Bob McGinn, who yeah. covered the Packers for years. And McGinn dropped some bombs, bombs, bombs about the Packers' attitude toward Aaron Rodgers. And of course, that sparked people saying, "Oh, McGinn's just salty. He's he. You know, they took away his credential. Whatever. Blah blah blah." I I have a feeling the guy still knows people in the organization. And his take was the Packers have had enough. They're disgusted with Rodgers, and they're ready to move forward with Jordan Love. And, you know, somebody asked me last week, well, how do the Packers know Jordan Love's going to be any good? Well, how did they know Aaron Rodgers was going to be any good? But he sat on the bench for three years behind Brett Favre, and they decided it was time to turn the page. And that tracks now. Love has sat for three years. We saw a glimpse of him on that Sunday night against the Eagles when Rodgers got hurt, and it looked pretty good. They traded up in round one to get him. They want to see what he has. So that's what makes this even more awkward. What if Rodgers says, okay, I've decided, number one, I want to play, and number two, I want to play for the Packers, and the Packers say, well, maybe you should go back for another darkness retreat before you finalize your desire to play in Green Bay because we, we kind of want to move on to Jordan Love. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I understand, you know, that thought process. I understand them being exhausted with the Aaron Rodgers situation. You know, the fact that, yeah, Rodgers won the two MVPs. He took the power back. He got the financial, you know, guarantees and money to get all the power back in the situation, right? But by all due accounts, last year didn't didn't look his best. Doesn't look like he put his best foot forward and putting him and putting himself and the team in the position to be his best and their best. So those are all things that I think work against him in the public forum right now, for sure. Let alone, yeah, he's it's 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 a hot hot button topic that dominates their locker room all the time, dominates their organization, and it's 
wait, are we going to have them next year or are we not? Are we playing for the future or are we, wait, do we stay here and keep the team together and, you know, sign a, a veteran free agent and do that because we got Rodgers and we still think we're in a window? Or do we flip the team over and start, you know, developing and young and build to the future a little bit? They're kind of stuck in limbo because of this situation. I know that could be worse, but it's not ideal for an organization and I can understand them being tired by all of this. And when he's playing at an MVP level, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, sure. You find a way to make it work. Sure. Last year, it wasn't MVP level. Last year, he wasn't all in. And, Chris, the thing that continues to stand out to me. Yeah. We saw the Packers trade their best receiver. We saw the Chiefs trade their best receiver. We saw what Patrick Mahomes did, both during the voluntary offseason program and on his own time to get his receivers ready. We saw what Aaron Rodgers didn't do. You know, I think that if the Packers are going to welcome him back this year, they're going to want a stronger commitment. You need to be all in. You need to do it right. We need to do. Someone needs to tell him, look at what Patrick Mahomes did and look at what happened for them. I mean, do we think it's a coincidence the Packers didn't really get it together until November, December? and they were too late to get into the postseason, if they had been playing all year like they did down the stretch, they would have gotten into the playoffs. And one of the reasons they didn't play all year like they did down the stretch is because you got these young receivers that still weren't as comfortable as they could have been and should have been with their quarterback because their quarterback wasn't around in the offseason, didn't gather them in California or wherever, get to know them, let them get to know him, let them not be freaked out by him. That's the huge blind spot he continues to have. I mean, these guys are going to be in awe of him. You need to break that down. You need to be one of the guys, ASAFP, in order to get to the point where you're out there having success. And so if the Packers are going to have him back, Chris, I think that needs to be one of the demands they make. We need your full focus. This is our last chance. This is our run. This is your legacy. And if we just put in a little bit more, we maybe get a lot more out of it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't think that's crazy to ask. I, I think they'd have to approach that situation a little bit and delicate delicately maybe but uh, I think you're you're right you know at the end of the day I mean yeah they're paying him a ton of money he's getting 60 million dollars you explained it he's the leader of the team he's the quarterback you want to be the man you got to be there in the offseason and lead the rest of the men you got a 99 million dollar dead cap hit on the on you you, you got to be there sorry I mean, it just it's it's so uh, it didn't make sense last year you explained it you were one of the first people to really call him out on it and that's kudos to you. And you're right. It showed during the year. And you, you're putting the perfect people up there together. There's Mahomes with a bunch of young guys and, and no superstar or anything like that at receiver. He has the best year of his career, spreads the wealth. You don't even know a thing. Green Bay, they didn't even look like the same offense. Didn't even look like the same quarterback. You know, so it, it's it's scary, Mike. And I don't know, Mike, do you – when I was talking before, is there another team that I'm missing – did I miss something? Have you heard it? It just seems like it's Jets or Packers, right, when it's all said and done here? I mean, the Raiders were the talk of that Pebble Beach golf tournament that Rodgers yeah, was out a few right. weeks ago. He was having fun with that. I still don't know that Aaron Rodgers and Josh McDaniels nah, are going to work, folks. I negative. mean, Patriots way west. That's the kind of hard coaching that Aaron Rodgers has never had and would never want. I was going to ask you this question. If you're Aaron Rodgers – and you look at the full list of teams, all 31 alternatives out there. Which team would you want to play for if you were Aaron Rodgers? Oh, well, like just blank slate? I mean, like, uh, you know. You can pick any team you want. You're a free agent. You can pick any team you want. And look, if the Packers don't want him, yeah, I'd like to think he's got a little more say than this attitude the Packers have that you'll only go where we send you. It's like, hey, bull crap, I'll stay here and you'll pay me $60 million and you don't want me here. So you're going to work with me a little bit. So if he had his choice of any team out there, which team do you do you think he would want to go to and or which team would you want to go to if you were him? Man, I, I mean, the Jets would be one of the teams that would be at the top of the list. I, I will just say that right off the bat. You know, like, I, I, hey, let's talk about the teams that need quarterbacks right now. Just just right off, right? I mean, Washington's not a horrible situation. I think it's actually pretty good. He could go there and be successful. Weapons, you know, Eric Bieniemy. you're going to get, you know, you're going to have a good offense, all of that. So I'll throw them in the mix as a team, and I go, oh, that makes sense. Carolina, no freaking way. The Saints, I don't see that happening. Houston, no way. Tampa, no way, 
right? So that's where, you know, and then Indianapolis Colts, I don't think that happens either. Raiders, I, I'm w with you with the McDaniels thing. So when you look at it realistically as far as places that need quarterback to do that, and then you match up the teams, the Jets got everything. We we hit that. I mean, they got everything. They're ready. They are. And that'd be the one that I think, you know, I'd, I'd be looking at if I were him, you know, where you're, you're the, you're the God King coming in. You're the main guy. There's nobody else there. You got to worry about the only guy there is a young quarterback who the fan base doesn't like, and you're his idol. So he's going to follow you and, and hopefully grow under that. I think the Jets are the team, Mike. Why would you say no freaking way to the Panthers? They got Frank Reich as a head coach. Jim Caldwell's there now as a senior offensive assistant. You've I, had Ajiro Evero taking over that defense, which is full of great players. I hear Why you. Why would he turn up his nose at the Panthers? No, you're right. Maybe I'm a little – I didn't mean to be so harsh. I guess I'm just saying I don't know if they're ready yet this year. I guess that's what I'm saying. And I don't think he's in the, oh, hey, this year is okay. I'm looking two years down the road conversation. I guess that's kind of what I was thinking there, Mike. You're right. There's a lot of things to like about Carolina. I did not mean to disrespect. You know me. Damn, I've been the Carolina guy the last two years telling everybody watch out for them. Uh, but I guess I just didn't feel like that was for Rodgers. And I don't know if they're ready for prime time. Quite the way I look at the Jets where you look at it and go – Position group by position group, you start to go, damn, they're real good there. Damn, they're real good there. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that at least, you know, open my eyes when I look at the Jets. If you go to Carolina, they would instantly become the best team in the division by far. It's a and fair maybe point. maybe fatten up their record mm -hmm. enough that they'd be the one seed. Those are things to consider. It's fair point. The road You're to right. Las Vegas would go through Charlotte at that point. And, of course, we've seen that happen for a few times for the Packers in the past decade or so. And it doesn't always work out. In fact, it hasn't worked out once with them as a number one seed. Uh, and you mentioned the commanders and Eric Bannerman. The first thing I thought is, oh, great, that's all Bannerman needs. Another quarterback who will be the well, well we can't make you a head coach because you know so it's the quarterback he's carrying because you, you had a yeah, great quarterback right, right, right. it's not you it's not you <laughs> yeah, it's right. the quarterback how about the, how about one team you didn't mention what's that how about the team that that has uh, the, the 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 young starter who broke his ankle in week two and then the even younger starter that jacked up his elbow so bad he couldn't have surgery last week because it's still too swollen uh, what about that team yeah, yeah that they team, tried to trade for him two years ago i know the 49ers sure i mean you know, as far as Rodgers, that, that makes sense all the way. You know, I, I guess what I would just say is, I uh, like I say to a few of these teams, you, you know, do you want to be, you know, you got a Super Bowl team that's so good. Do you want Rodgers to come in, take all the limelight, all the questions are about him? Is he going to be there more than a year? Are you going to be back in this situation again? You know, that money with the amount of players that, you know, again, they're, they're going to have to, figure out some things with their salary cap too and their team as it is, as many talented players they have. I guess that's where I think it, it wouldn't happen with Rodgers in San Francisco. Well, and, and I also think, because one of the things Rodgers was asked during that Pro-Am week, the, the, he said not San Fran. Somebody asked him where he's going to be, and he said not San Fran. So that's kind of been forgotten. But they were the team. Remember, that all started. This yeah. all bubbled up. Mm -hmm. It was 2020 when they drafted Jordan Love. That created an issue. And then a year later, it all hit the day before the draft that he thought he was going to be traded. He thought they told him he'd be traded. They didn't trade him. The 49ers called. The Packers said no. Um, and it just feels like the 49ers would be a spot where he could go. If, you, if you're looking for the deck most stacked in your favor, Chris, it's got to be the 49ers. Definitely. They are one above average quarterback away from winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, That's I, all it's going to take. Yeah. No, I, I mean, Mike, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying there. You know, I just think there's a there's a lot of moving parts there and things on their football team that, that make it hard. And I'm not necessarily, you know, sure that for all the things you talked about with Green Bay and as amazing as Shanahan is, I'm not sure you want to invite, you know, what could be a headache. Maybe it would be the greatest thing ever. But there are also, I mean, I think we could all agree that it could be, you know, an issue for them too. So, and then I think when you couple that with, wait, you're going to turn on the film from this year and go, damn, it wasn't very good. It was definitely the worst year of his career. Those are things that I, I would think would, you know, make you pump the brakes a little bit if you're the 49ers, at least in this conversation.
And one last point as it relates to the Aaron Rodgers darkness retreat. I've had people raise this question with me. And it's like, hey, you know, you, you're a guy that's a proponent of player mental health and that, that everybody needs to be sensitive to what they need in order to function properly. Why are you why are you giving Rodgers a hard time? The reason I give him a hard time about it is he 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 chooses to be public about it and then complain when people talk about it. That's what bothers me. I have no problem with the guy doing whatever he has to do to allow himself to make good decisions for his future. We all have the right to do that. It's part of the pursuit of happiness, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We all have the right to do whatever we choose to do to try to get us to a point where we are truly happy day in and day out. It just irked me that he was open about it, talked about it, raised it himself, and then got pissy because people started saying things about it. Like, come on, man, just go do it. You don't have to tell us. You tell us afterward or don't tell us at all. Do whatever you have to do to make yourself better. But if you're going to choose to go on air once a week and talk about your life, don't get upset when people talk about you talking about your life. Yeah, I, uh, agreed. I, I understand. It kind of seems to be a thing with all celebrities right now. It's like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Wait, there's something not good about me right now? Don't look. Kind of yeah. going across what the board. What are you looking at? Right. What are you look looking at? at? Wait, give me look my privacy. What the hell are you How dare at? you? I've been asking for your yeah. attention in every way possible here for the last hundred days in a row, but now it's a bad day of attention. I don't want it. I don't want it. Give me my respect. That's that's that's. I, it seems to be a thing across the board. But yeah, I'm I'm you know Lamar Jackson one, Aaron Rodgers two, and you know the 49ers thing. It's it's you know sounds all good too. But you know Nick Bosa's coming down the pipeline here. They're gonna have to make him the highest or one of the two or three highest paid guys, right? I don't think they can sacrifice some of the things they got going with their organization right now for the sixty million dollar price tag with Rodgers. And that's where I keep looking at it and going. Your Carolina thing is interesting. Definitely have made me think about that a little bit more seriously, uh, but I still think the Jets would be the team that that I would look at to be suspect or, or primary suspect number one. And again, if the Packers have this attitude, we're not trading him to an NFC team. There's a point where Rodgers, just like Lamar Jackson, there's a point where you got to be willing to be the bad guy. We've seen Aaron Rodgers kind of take a heel turn as far as it relates Definitely. to the public and the media. At some point, you got to say to the Packers, hey, guys, I've been here since 2005. I've been your starter since 2008. You've made a lot of money off of me over the years. I did some long-term deals where I was underpaid for long stretches. And we're coming to the end of the road here, and you're ready to move on. And you're not going to let me go where I want to go. That's bull crap. I'm going where I want to go. Because, Chris, he's got the ultimate hammer here. I know we need to take a break, but I want to say this. I think I mentioned it last week when we did our PFTPM podcast. He could always do exactly what Favre did 15 years ago. He could retire now. And then he could unretire later and really put the Packers in a tough spot. Because 15 years ago, the Packers had the cap space to absorb the Brett Favre $12 million salary. The Packers probably aren't going to have the cap space to welcome Aaron Rodgers back. If he wants to do the full Brett Favre thing, he's going to get to dictate his way out of town later. So let him go where he wants to go now. Let's be adults here. Let the guy, especially if you think he's not as good as he used to be, why are you worried about him playing for the Panthers? Let him go wherever he wants to go if you're ready to move on to Jordan Love. I'd like to think that we have adults in the room on both sides of this table. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying there. You're, you're right. You know, um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't let that be a deal breaker for me either at this point. And, you know, like we're saying – I don't know if there's really an NFC team that's really a threat out there that you would look at to go, oh, wow, I definitely don't want them to go there, especially if the 49ers are not getting involved. I can understand that where you think, oh, wait, you know, it's a top team. We might, but, you know, Carolina, as we're saying, yeah, there's potential. There's work to do. We like things there. But, uh, again, I, I don't think that's going to be one that, you know, is Aaron Rodgers' fancy right now as far as that team and where they are and – you know, new coach, all that type of stuff. They got to get the lay the groundwork there. Uh, I, I just, I don't imagine that. I don't know if they're ready enough right now for Aaron Rodgers. And, and it's not like the Packers are in a spot where they're penciled in as NFC champions. No, and they got to worry about handing Rodgers to someone who would knock them off. Right. So it's just spite. It just feels like there's an element of spite in all of this. And I just would like to think that when it's time for these two sides to go their separate ways, Sanity will prevail and goodwill will emerge and they'll make a decision that's right for everyone. But that's something else that's hovering over this week, along with Lamar Jackson. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.